this session on the industrial industrial wireless network basically um, uh, what uh, we mean by industrial grade and why it's important and uh, this session um, you know um, is is part it's it's basically part of a two part series uh, the first one um, is on um, understanding why is it even important to answer the question as to what we mean by industrial uh, grade uh, when it comes to wireless networks. Uh, the second, uh, which will be delivered in, during first week of April, uh, will then look at the details of what um, um, makes uh, a wireless network industrial grade. What are the characteristics uh, that uh, we sh um, that industrial grade wireless networks? have uh, so um, without further delay let's get straight into it um, you know after a quick intro um, yeah, I'll um, you know establish sort of the framework the foundation for um, you know why uh, it is important to answer the question um, and uh, there's a concept we've developed called the triangle of uh, the industrial triangle of distinction uh, which is what we um, uh, what will help us sort of understand the distinction between industrial grade and, and the enterprise grade uh, commercial grade networks and so i'll walk you through that in detail um, that is sort of the uh, major focus of today's uh, webinar uh, we'll conclude it i'll give you sort of a brief uh, on what to expect in the next um, uh, uh, webinar in this series um, and then uh, we'll conclude with that uh, um, and I'll, I'll try to leave about 15 minutes or so at least in the end um, uh, for any Q&A &A, um, uh, uh, that we get any questions that we get so you know quick intro first to Redline uh, you know who is Redline Communications so we are a Canadian manufacturer of uh, industrial grade private wireless networks um, including LTE so fixed wireless uh, as well as mobility uh, we've been around for um, a little more than two decades now uh, it was founded in 1999 here in Canada uh, we have projects um, in about 70 countries um, we have employees in 14 countries uh, so although we are a small company um, our footprint is is very large you know as our evp says we cast a, a bigger shadow um, uh, than uh, what our size uh, depicts um, uh, and we've been able to do that by um, focusing on um, uh, the uh, fulfilling the needs um, uh, of a specific niche market the communication needs of a specific uh, uh, niche market uh, which is industrial grade so providing connectivity in uh, challenging environments um, that is uh, uh, what we do um, uh, we you know hold 61 uh, uh, patents we are listed on uh, toronto stock exchange and we serve as i mentioned you know customers in challenging environments across multiple industries um industrial government uh, telecom and when i say industrial um, you know that includes oil and gas mining electricity uh, water utilities um, um, uh, public safety um, all these industries are included in that so um, as i alluded to it um, our focus um, uh, to enable the fourth industrial revolution via uh, wireless technology um, uh, we know that the world around us is changing uh, these critical industries uh, which form the core of um, any economy across the globe um, you know when it comes to oil and gas mining electricity um, uh, you know these industries are uh, transforming and must transform um, and uh, um, that transformation um, uh, today is being enabled via uh, wireless uh, technology um, and that's the focus uh, of redline um, it is to provide the connectivity for uh, big data and uh, 
AI ML, artificial intelligence and machine learning. Um, just a quick snapshot of our customers. Um, um, you know, as as you can see um, in in the in, in your region, um, we are engaged with a very broad spectrum uh, of customers, um, and and we've served uh, their needs uh, over the past couple of decades, uh, uh, specifically as I mentioned, uh, communication needs in challenging environments. So um, let's get to the topic of the day. Now, um, you know why wireless networks. Um, that is the first thing, you know, why are we even talking about wireless networks today? Um, uh, you would have, uh, if, if you follow the industry, um, you know, I, I, I doubt you missed sort of the terms uh, used 5G or private LTE or, um, uh, you know, the buzz around, uh, uh, created around um, all of these technologies. Um, so why is everyone talking about it? Um, and the key uh, uh, reason, um, you know, as I mentioned on the previous slide, um, it's it's the fourth industrial revolution, um, Industry 4.0, uh, oh, um, you know, uh, which is a term um, coined by, uh, um, you know, uh, uh, a German team uh, for the project of renewing the German manufacturing system uh, by integrating the industrial systems with modern information and com uh, communication technologies. Uh, uh, you know, that term was coined in 2011, so basically 10 years ago. Um, it has morphed into a number of things, uh, but that's basically where this whole concept of, uh, you know, the fourth industrial revolution uh, was, um, you know, first made prominent, um, uh, uh, which is, you know, just take, the industrial systems um, integrated with ICT and what what that means basically is you know uh, uh, leverage um, all the new technologies that are uh, you know even still developing um, uh, for you know uh, artificial intelligence machine learning um, you know automate uh, the industry um, you know, extend the situational of awareness to the remotest part of industrial infrastructure, uh, to be aware of um, uh, every single component in an industrial uh, system uh, in real time and uh, make decisions in real time. And of course, making such decisions um, in, in real time based on uh, such a large amount of uh, data, you know, you need artificial intelligence, you need to, to automate, you need machine uh, uh, learning for, for these systems to become intelligent. Um, now that can only happen, of course, um, if you have the data available. Um, and that's where big data comes uh, into play. AI, um, you know, uh, doesn't have much value, at least not in this, uh, in, in the industrial uh, infrastructure industries. Um, if there is no big data, if there's no data to gather from all the sensors um, uh, that provide that data in real time um, uh, from uh, all across the infrastructure. Uh, so, uh, that big data, the generation of that big data, uh, of course, how do you do that? Uh, you know, that's where connectivity comes into play. If you don't have connectivity, none of this works. Um, it's, it's, it's providing that connectivity uh, uh, platform, uh, which can be wireless, can be wireless. Um, uh, you know, that is what enables uh, big data which enables uh, artificial intelligence which basically is is transforming our industries and and what we call now call the industrial the fourth industrial revolution uh, without that connectivity um, you know to be honest none of this is possible uh, the the vision that we have uh, for the future uh, depends on this connectivity. And within that, as I mentioned, can be wireline, can be wireless. Um, you know, uh, 
when it comes to uh, 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 industrial systems, um, providing wireline connectivity uh, to all the uh, hundreds of thousands of uh, sensors out there, of course, is is um, you know not not possible. That is will become extremely costly, and as we will discuss later on. Um, uh, you know the the challenges that uh, industrial environments uh, uh, pose, uh, the dynamic environment, constantly changing environments. For example, in an underground mine, um, you know, wireline connectivity uh, becomes cost prohibitive very uh, soon. Uh, so wireless becomes pretty much uh, uh, the major option uh, for this kind of transformation. So okay, if wireless uh, uh, networks and wireless technologies um, are the need, then, uh, you know, why should we specifically look at the need of industrial system? What is different about them? Um, you know, wireless technology, uh, or, uh, whether it was mobility or whether it's Wi-Fi, has been around for, for decades. Uh, so why don't we just, you know, uh, take um, um, a 3G or 4G um, uh, radio um, that has been used, a 4G radio that has been used for you know almost a decade now. Why can't we just take that radio and install it um, uh, in a mine? Uh, or why can't we uh, install it, um, you know, at, at the same sort of equipment or the router that I have at home in an offshore uh, oil rig? Um, you know, can I just do that? Um, and to answer that question, uh, we need to understand the distinction uh, between uh, the industrial systems and uh, enterprise systems. Um, and that uh, uh, distinction uh, sort of, we uh, have developed a framework which we call the industrial triangle of distinction, now, which basically looks at three key uh, uh, distinction factors um, uh, which helps us understand the differences uh, between um, you know the commercial uh, enterprise grade networks um, uh, versus um, sort of the industrial grade um, uh, wireless solutions that we have. Uh, so let's, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll walk you through um, each of these factors uh, one by one. We'll discuss in details and, uh, you know, as we discussed in the beginning, if you have questions, please, um, you know, uh, submit them via chat um, and, and I can address them towards the end. So the first uh, sort of factor we know to look at is the reason of existence um, uh, of, of wireless networks. Uh, wireless networks uh, historically, um, as I mentioned, have existed for a long uh, time. And, and the reason for existence is serving the needs of, of enterprise networks. So for example, the, the diagram, the network diagram you see um, uh, on the left of the screen, um, you know, these are the kinds of systems, the soft phones, the computers, the, um, the um, sort of um, uh, uh, video conferencing uh, tools that we use, uh, uh, the printers, um, you know, the uh, desktops uh, connected via switches, um, uh, back to um, uh, you know the 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 core um, and to internet, you know uh, uh, that is sort of historically um, the 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 networks um, that wireless technology has, has served and helped us uh, uh, build. The first thing we need to do is acknowledge uh, that OT, which is operations technology is not the same as IT, um, information technology. Uh, IT systems traditionally manage information. OT systems manage physical processes. Um, and remember, the industrial infrastructure is capital intensive. Um, uh, so these physical processes, um, the, the capital intensive assets uh, the safety of those assets, 
uh, depend on these physical processes. Uh, and more importantly, the safety of humans working in these environments depend on these processes. Um, a, a IT, as I said, mentioned uh, managed transformation uh, information. Um, OT manages these physical processes. Um, uh, now note that you know this is not an attempt to trivialize uh, IT um, or even OT. Uh, uh, both sides, you know, are are critical uh, uh, for the functioning of a business, um, and and both have learned a lot from each other over the past few decades uh, since the third industrial revolution. Okay, and this collaboration must further increase uh, for us to enable um, uh, the fourth industrial revolution um, and to convert it into a safe, cost-effective, and reliable reality. Uh, uh, but the first requirement of this collaboration um, is uh, to acknowledge that the two uh, are different. Um, uh, it, it is, uh, you know, Anyone who's worked uh, on an offshore rig, anyone who's worked in an underground mine or have designed networks for these environments, I hope uh, it, it would be able to um, uh, sort of uh, uh, support the argument I'm trying to make is that the two are uh, basically uh, fundamentally different uh, from each other and that both sides uh, have to collaborate with each other in order to um, integrate information and communication technologies uh, with industrial systems. The second, as, as a result of that, uh, you know, acknowledgement, then we also need to acknowledge that when it comes to industrial uh, uh, systems and when it comes to OT, uh, in that environment, uh, the communication needs of OT uh, usually takes preference over those of IT. Um, uh, uh, that is an important distinction that we need to um, understand. And this has implications as we will discuss later on, on how you design uh, that network things like quality of service, for example, become important. Um, uh, so, uh, it, you know, and, and the reason for this, basically, as to why that is, as I mentioned, it's the physical processes. It's uh, uh, the reality that, um, you know, the human lives depend on, uh, on OT. Uh, it's the, rea for example, air quality monitoring system. Um, you know, you look at the picture on the left, um, if you lose access to um, internet, you lose access to uh, sort of the business systems. Uh, yes, these these needs are important. I'm not saying they they are not important, but in that moment, okay, if if there's if from a, a network design perspective, is if there's if if the resources for whatever reason, you know, there's an outage or whatever, uh, are diminished, then uh, you know the the um, allocation of those resources must be prioritized and uh, the the at in such a situation the needs of ot then take preference over those of um, it and in most cases and we'll discuss this soon in most cases um, uh, this uh, is also a result of how the business cases are built um, in in these environments And that's the next reason uh, that we need to understand the reason of existence that we need to understand is that you know for for a, um, a you know telecom service provider for example um, a wireless network a 4g network uh, is a revenue driver uh, these networks are built uh, to generate revenue for an oil and gas customer for a utility um, uh, for a mine, the wireless networks are built to ensure personal or asset safety um, and uh, the efficiency of underlying industrial systems. Um, it's a cost. It doesn't 
generate revenue, um, at least not directly. Um, okay, it's it's more, um, and this is a, an important distinction to understand because uh, this has major implications for business case uh, justification and investment decisions. Uh, uh, so, uh, uh, for example, uh, you know. Um, um, uh, uh, a number I typically quote is here in, in uh, Canada, and we are, as I mentioned in the beginning, Canadian manufacturer. So here in Canada, uh, you know, uh, Bell Canada, the telecom service provider here, uh, covers 98% uh, uh, of Ontario's population. Okay, um, but if you look at the territory, um, it's only 23%, um, or, you know, let's say 25%. So one fourth of the territory, the geographic territory is covered by that uh, uh, wireless infrastructure uh, that the telecom service provider has built here. Um, you know, is the electricity infrastructure in this province uh, limited to that geographic territory? Of course not. Uh, is the mining infrastructure limited to that territory? Of course not. Uh, um, so is the telecom service provider going to extend uh, its um, uh, existing infrastructure uh, beyond uh, these population centers? Again, of course not. Um, from a revenue perspective, there is no justification for it. Return on investment, no, that's, that's just the reality. And, and uh, these organizations simply cannot be expected uh, to build networks in area where uh, you know the the return uh, on investment uh, doesn't justify it. Um, so, but does that mean that wireless connectivity is not required? Um, uh, you know, in in these challenging environments away from population centers. Um, again, of course not. Um, you know, the wireless connectivity is still required. Um, uh, that is what fourth industrial revolution is all about. Um, so um, uh, that network must be built, and that network, remember, it's it's not. So if a mine deploys a wireless network, uh, you know that network is not being built to generate revenue. That network is being built to save uh, uh, the workforce. It is being built to save the capital intensive assets. Um, it is uh, being built to improve the efficiency, uh, operational efficiency of, of that mining infrastructure. And hence, um, you know, uh, it, it's more the business case becomes more cost avoidance um, as opposed to revenue generation. Um, um, and that's a key distinction we need to understand because this has implications, as I mentioned, on how the business case is built and how the procurement decisions are made. Um, so uh, uh, that, um, um, you know, the, the reason of existence of these two, um, um, uh, the reason of existence of industrial wireless networks, um, you know, is, is completely different um, um, than uh, the reason of their existence in a, in a commercial or enterprise environment. Now, the next factor in that industrial uh, triangle of distinction is uh, function. You know, that distinction, um, uh, you know, further uh, um, uh, expands or, or sort of applies also to the function that, that the wireless networks are supposed to perform in these environments. Um, you know, as I mentioned, same picture, IT um, and OT, an enterprise network fulfills the need of all the IT applications. An industrial network must fulfill the needs of IT as well as OT. It must fulfill the needs of both. And that introduces its own challenges. Because now on the one hand, uh, you have to serve the needs of a SCADA infrastructure, uh, you know, in, in kilobits per second, um, you know, uh, so, so bandwidth availability or capacity is not that critical, but the coverage required is extensive because these assets might be spread across a broad um, uh, geography. 
you know, but at the same time, this network is supposed to fulfill the capacity needs of IT applications, you know, which, uh, you know, might go beyond, you know, nowadays, uh, uh, everyone with an iPhone, a Samsung phone would expect like, you know, 10, 20, 25 megabits per second at least. Uh, so, uh, you know, the network, the uh, wireless network in an industrial environment must fulfill the needs of both these uh, um, networks. And that, again, uh, has uh, has implications on how you design the network and how you deploy the network. So, so another way to look at the differences between function is, is you know, um, look at a couple of industries. You know, I'll, I'll use them as an example. Uh, just walk you through it. So, uh, you know, to understand uh, why the functions, um, uh, uh, how the functions are performed, uh, is a distinct uh, characteristics of industrial wireless networks. Uh, so a, a mining industry, um, you know, uh, a mine typically goes through uh, multiple stages um, uh, throughout its uh, 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 life. You know, you, you start with exploration um, um, and at that stage, you know, uh, staff uh, numbers are pretty low, remote location, uh, safety concerns uh, significant. Um, you know, um, emergency beacons, GPS, trailers, laptops, these are the sort of, um, uh, you know, assets that need connectivity. Um, the, this has, so the kind of wireless system you need, you need wide coverage. Um, uh, you need an economical bandwidth solution. Uh, and these are supposed to be deployed in a remote, harsh environment, um, you know, uh, with usually no power availability, um, no connectivity whatsoever. Um, um, so, uh, you know, once you do that um, uh, in the advanced exploration stage, uh, you know, semi-permanent buildings begin to pop up, um, uh, tunnels, um, you know, uh, the, the workforce starts dig digging the tunnels, um, and underground human safety um, uh, becomes important. Um, at this point, still, uh, the, the uh, network, while the coverage area required uh, may be large, uh, like not, not insignificant, uh, 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 large, I mean, more than what sort of a typical Wi-Fi uh, uh, network can fulfill, um, uh, you know, but, uh, uh, it's it's still from a, a, a capacity perspective, um, uh, you know, it's it's or or the number of devices that needs to be served from that perspective, it's still um, um, you know not uh, big in number. So uh, it, it, you need something that is uh, downward scalable. Uh, you know, if if you take a commercial grade uh, network. Um, uh, which uh, starts with sort of the minimum users it serves is 50,000 or 100,000 users. Uh, you know, you're not at this stage um, at, where you can uh, fully use that kind of a solution cost effectively. Um, um, again, uh, you know, this uh, mining industry, uh, you know, not the same as um, uh, a service provider. So the the resources available to um, uh, not just deploy, but then maintain the wireless infrastructure are, uh, you know, not that easy to find um, um, and even, even fund. Um, so the expectation is that this equipment uh, must be easily uh, maintained, um, you know, the, you get into the construction stage, uh, you know, and then, you know, the mine uh, begins to grow. Um, uh, you get to the mature mine. As the mine grows, uh, the network, the wireless network must grow along uh, with it. Um, so what this all means at the end of the day, that the network, the wireless network, you know, as the mine is constantly changing, the wireless network must change with it. So now, 
uh, imagine if you have a rigid wireless network um, you know that demands you know uh, uh, let's say significant uh, power for it to work uh, you know changing that network and uh, enabling it to grow uh, with the mind and expand with the mind uh, that becomes a challenge um, you know it it you know it is possible uh, to do it but with at a higher cost so th so the needs within this industry the function that the wireless um, uh, technology must uh, uh, perform uh, you know that function is constantly changing one it's dynamic it it you know it's it's uh, at the exploration stage the function that the network is expected to perform is different uh, uh, than the function that the, the network is supposed to perform at the mature mind stage. The kind of applications that are introduced. So as, uh, you know, um, um, workforce begins to uh, go underground, now you need air quality, or air quality monitoring uh, systems, for example, to monitor um, air quality underground. Um, and you know hence uh, that application even though the capacity requirements may not be high um, you know the reliability requirements are significantly high uh, human lives depend on it uh, so you can imagine as the mind grows all these new applications are enabled autonomous haulage another big one um, you know so it, it, the network uh, is supposed to grow with it. The, the flexibility um, that it requires uh, the, um, in serving the needs of an um, ever-growing mind is, uh, you know, is, uh, that's a significant distinction. Same thing about utilities. Now, utilities, uh, remember, you know, typically for, for uh, you know, technology areas, generation, transmission, distribution, customers, um, you have electricity flow across this infrastructure and you also have, um, you know, a communication flow across this infrastructure for teleprotection, um, for uh, SCADA, for mission critical voice, um, as well as for business systems, uh, for workforce uh, productivity. Um, you know, so, so, so the needs here, again, um, for a communication networks to fulfill, um, you know, are both OT and IT. And if you look at uh, uh, the needs of those two systems, the power system and the business system, um, uh, uh, you see, uh, you know, that there is a difference um, in the needs of the two. SCADA is low bandwidth, uh, requires uh, redundancy, protection relay, ultra low redundancy. Um, ultra low latency um, requires redundant communication paths um, uh, utilities uh, for power system uh, specifically uh, you know for for the high voltage um, communication for high voltage transmission systems they need complete outage planning uh, uh, control especially today um, with distributed generation uh, where uh, the outage of <clears throat> the uh, electricity infrastructure, um, uh, you know, uh, schedule outages must be coordinated uh, with a plethora of gener uh, uh, generating companies. Um, uh, you know, utilities must be in control, which typically has driven them um, in going for private networks uh, so that they can um, stay in control of those outages. Um, mission critical uh, voice, you know, push to talk. Um, again, the reliability that it requires, um, uh, you know, it's 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 different. Um, it, those of you who have, um, you know, sort of um, um, followed the news um, of all these uh, environmental disasters, for example, you know, the the, the uh, one disaster that always, which is the first one, I realized this difference, uh, uh, Katerina. Um, you know. Uh, I think it was 2004, 2005, um, you know, um, the destruction that was caused by Katerina. Um, a, you know, the entire infrastructure, um, you know, uh, 
no longer there, no longer available to fulfill the needs, except the mission critical voice network. Um, you know, that kept working. Um, and that is what all the emergency um, and disaster relief teams uh, were leveraging. Um, you know, so you can uh, uh, understand um, uh, the kind of role that these that these networks play. On the other hand, on the right side, if you look at it, it's it's not that these needs are not important. Uh, you know, um, but they are different. Business applications, high bandwidth requirement. Uh, workforce mobility requires coverage. Now, remember, workforce has to uh, go beyond uh, um, uh, the sort of uh, footprint of the existing public infrastructures, and they still need uh, coverage. They still need that connectivity, and they need capacity. You know, fleet management. Uh, yeah, okay, capacity requirement is low, uh, but coverage requirement is high. Um, uh, so, uh, uh, wireless networks uh, built to fulfill the needs of an electric utility uh, must for fulfill this very broad uh, spectrum of functions um, and geography. And we cannot forget uh, uh, this need, uh, the distinction, uh, this distinction. Um, last but not least, the third factor, which is the environment. You know, industrial systems we all know exist in challenging environments. Um, you know, uh, it, it, these environments are sort of everyone knows the, the the presence of chemicals and the risk of corrosion in these environments. Um, um, from an RF uh, propagation perspective, highly challenging. Um, uh, you know, power availability. Um, you know, it, it's a major cost that is incurred. Um, confined spaces, uh, so air quality monitoring, um, evacuation procedures, all these become very important. The, the uh, sort of overall the reliability needs, um, it, it, no matter how this and challenging this environment is, the reliability needs that it, I discussed on a previous slide, uh, those needs, remember, they remain, um, you know, uh, despite all these challenges, uh, the network is uh, still expected to perform um, as, as, as reliable as it would anywhere else. Um, you know, that need does not change, whether it's a mine uh, near a North Pole, a well site in a desert, or an offshore rig, um, you know, with abundance of metal in the middle uh, of an ocean, a high salt environment. Uh, the need for reliability to ensure workforce safety and cost, cost effectiveness of operations remains the same, despite all these challenges. So I'll, you know, quickly, um, go through sort of each aspect of it before we wrap this up um, you know the first thing chemicals and corrosion okay um, anyone who has visited an offshore rig um, understands that these places uh, do not offer a friendly environment uh, to electronics and communication infrastructure um, you know the the atmosphere uh, uh, whether it's outside or inside uh, closed places uh, it's laced with salty uh, uh, moisture um, as well as chemical vapor um, in addition to this uh, salty uh, vapor laden environment uh, you know um, it, it, drilling crews often conduct salt water uh, wash down of the drill floor, uh, floor. so you know the, the, those corrosive fluids spatter all over um, you know the risk of corro corrosion in these environment becomes is is at its highest um, you know according to nace the global corrosion authority the economic impact of corrosion in the united states alone stands at you know close to 280 billion dollar a year so you know that's that's just the cost of corrosion if, uh, if, if you look at um, uh, you know uh, the numbers for any of these uh, industries. Um, you know it, that's a significant cost to the industry, um, and you know that's where sort of uh, you hear about uh, nickel-plated equipment for these environment uh, because uh, such equipment has proven to provide significantly better resistance. Uh, 
uh, to corrosion and wear. Uh, the next, okay, um, hostile environment for RF propagation. Uh, wireless links in industrial um, automation, uh, whether it's for emergency communication process control, um, you know, whether it's for uh, feedback systems um, uh, uh, or monitoring equipment, they require certain uh, performance and reliability assurances. Uh, okay, but these environments, uh, you know, as I mentioned earlier, uh, are full of metallic metallic uh, obstacles. Okay, these obstacles shadow the radio propagation and cause coverage holes. Um, it, the, we already uh, discussed um, how dynamic that environment is. It's it's already it's it's always uh, changing. You know, high noise, uh, electromagnetic radiations, multipath distortion, humidity, dust. Uh, you know all. Uh, these factors uh, pose a significant challenge to to um, RF propagation. If if uh, the 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 networks that we deploy, um, if if um, you know we do not cater to at the engineering and design phase, if do we do not cater to these needs, then suboptimal networks, um, you know. Uh, will definitely experience extended packet delay and high packet loss ratio. The next, um, okay, um, and very uh, important, I'd say, uh, maybe the most critical even explosion hazards because life depend on it. Um, you know, it's it, it, the this distinct characteristic of hazardous industrial environments deserve uh, special consideration. Uh, yeah, at the engineering and design uh, stage, um, uh, those of us who are designing these networks must go the extra mile uh, to conduct uh, engineering due diligence um, when selecting the best fit, fit wireless networks for these environments. Um, you know, right from the early days of process industries, um, you know, it, it was, uh, you know, realized that um, the, the, these challenging environments, you know, high voltage electricity, the gases, petrochemicals, the powders and dust, um, you know, um, uh, they pose a significant explosion hazard. Uh, you know, even uh, wheat dust uh, poses um, an explosion um, has it and extra safety measures to prevent and mitigate uh, such explosions are necessary. Uh, the next power availability, uh, you know, this can be a challenging in uh, challenge in industrial environment. Um, you know, uh, already discussed. Uh, um, these are remote locations away from population centers. Um, power availability um, is challenging. Uh, you know, think of an offshore rig, think of an underground mine, uh, especially an underground mine as the mine expands, um, you know, um, it, the, the wireless network has to expand with it. Um, and oh, wherever the wireless network goes, uh, you'll have to power the equipment up. Um, so, uh, you, you know, uh, the uh, power availability, if, if you have um, uh, a wireless network that demands um, high power, um, you know, the costs uh, will, uh, will go high. These are, uh, you know, um, uh, sort of, and, and trying it back to, uh, you know, that whole concept of revenue driver is a cost driver, um, uh, you know, getting uh, funding um, for funds, funds are all, almost always uh, uh, limited. So the higher the power consumption, and especially in these environments, I talked about, uh, you know, the uh, reliability demands redundancy, um, you know, so power has to be redundant, the cost even further uh, goes up. And um, um, you know, not don't forget uh, confined spaces. 
you know, in, in these spaces, uh, workforce safety depends on reliable communications. Uh, you know, gas sensing and air quality monitoring. Um, of course, that is, is uh, critical. Um, timely evacuation of workforce uh, if um, an incident happens uh, is critical. Um, you know, that means um, the uh, latency, for example, becomes critical. Um, uh, you know, uh, the uh, ability to work, uh, for the networks to continue working um, is, is uh, in, in these environments becomes critical, whether it's um, uh, voice communications or human occupancy identification. Uh, reliable uh, communication for these in confined spaces uh, becomes mandatory. So, you know, we talked about, uh, you know, sort of the industrial triangle of distinction, just to wrap it up. Um, okay, uh, the, the, the goal was to understand that uh, the industrial systems, the needs of industrial systems are different uh, uh, from the needs of uh, your regular enterprise uh, networks. Um, that the reason wireless networks exist in these challenging environment are different. That the functions the wireless networks are expected to perform in these challenging environments are different. And you know that takes me to the third factor, which is that the environment in itself um, is different. Um, and uh, you know when we engineer and design networks uh, for these uh, for industrial systems, um, uh, we need to ensure uh, that we understand these uh, distinctions. Um, you know, which sort of uh, um, is assist that that comprehension of that distinction um, uh, to assist that we, um, you know, have proposed this framework called the industrial triangle of distinction. Which, um, you know, and we will talk about this in the next um, uh, session, um, you know, hopefully first week of April uh, is um, you know, takes us to sort of the four key criteria um, of industrial grade wireless network. Um, you know, that, that the industrial grade wireless networks, um, you know, purpose built to fulfill uh, 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 these needs. Um, these networks are safe and safety enhancing. Uh, they are reliable, they are secure, and they are cost effective. Um, and, and I'll walk you through um, uh, um, the details of each of these criteria, what to look for um, um, uh, to identify uh, whether uh, a network solution uh, being proposed is industrial grade or not. Um, so that is something we'll discuss in the next um, uh, uh, session. Uh, for now, I hope uh, you found this, um, you know, uh, valuable use of your time. I am open to um, questions. Um, so um, not sure if there were any, but um, um, uh, let's uh, 